Welcome back! I have a small confession to make. Ever since I started uploading videos, somebody has been nagging me about adding a Lebanese episode to the collection. It is finally ready, so the nagging can stop. Hopefully it will. The area we know today as Lebanon has been home to many different peoples and cultures. Most famous among them are probably the Phoenicians, who established and then maintained their maritime culture in the 3rd and 2nd millennia BC. They created the alphabet, which eventually led to the Greek and Latin versions, while some of their colonies, like Carthage, would show up later in history as important players. Phoenician rule was followed by Egyptian, Hittite, Assyrian, Babylonian, and Persian domination. Then came the Greeks and the Romans, before Islam arrived in the 7th century, when Muslim Arabs conquered Syria. The population remained mixed, although Islam and the Arab language and culture dominated, especially in cities. The territory of Lebanon was essentially divided between the Maronite Christians and the Druze, a local branch of Islam. In the 12th century, Crusader states were established. The Maronites swore allegiance to the Pope in Rome, which was also the starting point of a closer relationship with Italy, and more importantly, France. After the Crusaders had been pushed out, first the Mamluks of Egypt, and then the Ottomans dominated the region. The Ottomans relied on local feudal families to maintain their rule, which was briefly interrupted on a few occasions, with attempts to establish Italian and then even Russian overlordship. The French returned with Napoleon, but quickly retreated after they failed to take Accra. In the early 19th century, a new emir ruled over what was two-thirds of today's Lebanon, but internal squabbles and an increasingly sectarian war between Maronites and Druze consumed the region. In the end, the Maronites won, they increased their wealth and influence, while the Druze were isolated. Beirut became an important center of silk production and export, their connections to French cities increased European influence. Dividing Lebanon into two districts by the Ottomans didn't help. The situation remained unstable, with Maronites living in towns, while the Druze lived in small villages. The former successfully overthrew the feudal system, but in 1860 a civil war broke out, in which the Christians now even opposed Ottoman rule backed by the French, while the Druze were supported by the Ottomans and the British. A compromise was reached, creating a reduced Maronite province, but this would not be the last time European intervention changed the course of events. The last decades of the century were more stable, with less violence. Both groups focused on economic development, there was only a brief Druze uprising against high taxes and harsh government rule. In the early 20th century, reform movements started to appear, most notably in Beirut. Among them, we find groups that supported Ottoman reforms, separatism, and even pan-Arab nationalism. During World War I, a Great Famine essentially halved the population of Mount Lebanon. This was followed by the collapse of the Ottoman Empire and a French takeover of Syria, which included Lebanon as well. Subsequent changes by the French moved the internal border east of the Bika Valley, which reduced the size of the province of Damascus and doubled the territory under Beirut's control, altering the ethnic ratios as large groups of Muslims were added to the population. The 1926 constitution established a balance of power. It declared that the president had to be Christian, while the prime minister a Sunni Muslim. Parliament seats were then distributed on a 6 to 5 basis, maintaining a Christian majority. But by the 1960s, 
Muslims were thought to be the majority of the population, which increased unrest. When France was defeated by Nazi Germany in 1940, the new Vichy government maintained access to their colonies, including Syria, but just a year later, a British invasion ended Vichy rule, and the leader of the Free French Movement, Charles de Gaulle, approved Lebanese independence. This would not be easy, though. In late 1943, when the newly elected government abolished the French mandate, they were sent to prison, until the French relented due to international pressure. French troops were withdrawn from the new Republic of Lebanon in 1946. This was followed by periods of stability and renewed hostilities. Beirut became an important international center of commerce. It was known as the Paris of the Middle East, although trouble was already looming. After 1948, the conclusion of the first Arab-Israeli war, the first Palestinian refugees arrived. The 1950s were relatively calm, although in 1958 an insurrection started. Order was re-established only after 5,000 U.S. Marines arrived. During the next decade, Beirut was able to focus on banking and tourism. The economy first stabilized and then grew, backed by the oil-rich Arab states, which preferred to do business in Lebanon. As a consequence of the 1967 Arab-Israeli War and the Jordanian Civil War, more refugees arrived, while Yasser Arafat's PLO started using Lebanon as a platform to organize attacks against Israel, which would respond with bombing raids to encourage the Lebanese government to crack down on Palestinian militants. This created further division between the Christian and the Muslim halves of the population. On both sides, more and more people felt that the central government was weak and indecisive. The first militias started to appear, with more hostilities along the country's southern border. In 1975, the increasing opposition between Maronite and Orthodox Christians on one side, and Sunni and Shia Muslims on the other, led to a civil war. But we should emphasize that the conflict had a lot more participants so dividing the country into two camps does not correspond to reality. There were significant numbers of Druze, Kurds, Armenians and Palestinian refugees as well who were active in the conflict. Along with Syrian and Israeli intervention, UN forces and who knows who else. Maybe one day I'll upload a video on the civil war itself, once I feel safe enough from my friends. This should be it for the brief history of pre-Civil War Lebanon. Now that my task is done, I can look forward to my next tasty dinner, which will hopefully include Lebanese specialties. We'll meet again soon in another video detailing the beginnings of the Ottoman Empire, mainly to silence another nagging friend.